Ranger Rick, Forces in Motion. Everything around us is in motion. We can see planes flying overhead. We can, uh, and cars driving down the street. We even move as we walk to school or pedal our bikes. Even the planet is moving. But why do things move and how? These are questions that have fascinated scientists for centuries. If you've ever tried to twirl a hula hoop, you know that it's not easy as it looks. You must move your body in just the right way to set a hula hoop in motion. But why does moving your body move the hula hoop? And why does the hoop eventually stop twirling when you stop moving? The answers to these questions are in the theories of force and motion. Consider We consider an object to be in motion when it's not standing still. This may seem fairly obvious. An object tends to remain at rest or keep moving in a straight line. In order for an object to move or stop moving, a force must be applied to it. This is one of the laws of motion. So a baseball at rest will not move unless someone throws it or a bat hits it. This property of remaining at rest or in motion is called inertia. The arm or the baseball provides that force to overcome the ball's inertia. Two forces are at work here. The children are applying force to throw the snowball balls and gravity is pulling, pulling the balls downward. These combined forces are why projectiles such as snowballs move in an arc. The tiger's powerful legs exert a force that sets the animal in motion. The swan's muscles make its wings flap, and the wings move the swan's body, which provides the force that moves the water. Several forces move this hand glider, and the wind keeps the, air, the aircraft in motion while gravity pulls the hand glider downward. The force that sets an object into motion does one of two things. It either pushes or it pulls. Pushing and pulling can affect how an object moves. At the same time, something is also working against the push or the pull, the object itself. The object deserts an equal force in the opposite direction because of its inertia. This is another law of motion. So these children are exerting similar pulling forces against each other. This picture is illustrating what's happening. When opposites but basically equal forces attract, well, nothing seems to be moving. This orangutan moves the trees by pulling itself. In order for an animal to keep moving, it must continue to pull. Otherwise, it'll stop. As a bulldozer pushes a pile of dirt, the dirt actually applies an equal push in the opposite direction. To get the dirt to move, the bulldozer must apply more force against the dirt than the dirt applies against the bulldozer. For a tow truck to pull an, untowing car, an unmoving car, it must first overcome the car's inertia. As the truck begins to move, the force it has to exert becomes less and the car begins to move and it gains momentum. So the paddle wheel of this boat pushes against the water. As the water is pushed backwards, the boat is pushed forwards. This illustrates how a force the push produces an equal force, but in the opposite direction. Another law of motion explains that forces can change an object's motion. For an example, a force can speed up motion or slow it down. It can also change the motion's direction. Making an object move down, back and forth, or around and around, many objects move uh, to straight lines. In fact, an object will continue to move in a straight line unless a force acts upon it to change direction or speed. Gravity and force cause the engines to provide the forces that move the cars down the hill. The curvy road and the cars break and add friction, which can cause the cars to slow. We can move from a straight line into a curvy pattern by just changing the force. So as you ride a swing, you experience a very basic motion, a back and forth. 
a back and forth movement is called oscillation and vibration. The girl's legs provide the force that makes the swing move back and forth. When you ride on a merry-go-round, you continue to spin, even though you are no longer pushing. This is because the spinning motion has created a angular motion. Objects can also move up and down in order to move upward. The force or the pull must move away from the object from the ground. The gears and the motor and the escalator help to pull the people up. It's like a moving elevator. So forces are invisible. You can see objects that create or transmit forces. You can see the engine of a car and the engine, which is fueled by gasoline, makes different parts of the car move, which in turn rotate the tires, which then push the car along the road. You can't see the wind, although you can feel it. Uh, and you can't push the force of a magnet as it pulls and pushes. Can you see what makes the airplane fly? As the propeller spins, it moves the plane through the air. The air flowing above the wings moves faster than the air moving below the wings. The slow moving air keeps the wings in the plane in flight. So when a bird flies, it uses its wings to keep itself aloft. The back and forth movement propels the bird forward and up and down. By varying the force, the bird can change its speed and direction. So your feet can push the pedals of a bike. This force results in the motion that you see. So the pedals move the gears, which in turn move the wheels and in turn push you along the street. You can watch these things as they move. Next, we have the wind that exerts a force that sets objects in motion too. Even though we can't see it, the wind pushes against the sails to make the boat move. The stronger the wind, the faster the boat will travel. A magnet exerts both a push and a pull. It will pull the objects or another magnet, but like the pulls of the magnets, they face each other. Then the forces will push each other away. Gravity is a force that we encounter all the time. It is the force that pulls things to the earth. Gravity is also what keeps the planet spinning um, through space and around the sun. So material objects are composed of mass, and all mass has gravity. Gravity is a force that pulls on or attracts the objects. Because the sun is massive and it exerts a strong gravitational pull on the planets in our solar system. So just as the earth moves around the sun, the moon moves around the earth. When astronauts visit the moon, they had to adjust its gravity, which is one sixth that of the earth. Since the moon has less mass than the earth, its gravitational pull does too. So all the planets in our solar system move or revolve around the sun, each in its own path or orbit. That gravitational pull of the sun keeps all nine planets in their retrospective orbits. Because each planet has different mass, each has a different amount of gravity. So nature is full of dynamic examples of movement. Clouds rush across the sky, tornado winds whirl and spin out of control. Pressure deep inside the earth pushes up a fiery lava. Even waves crashing on the beach have an incredible force. Motion's gravitational force pulls on the world's oceans, which creates the tides that push and pull on the land. Waves also push and pull, moving back and forth, and as they do, they change the shape of the land, ending it with an amazing transformation under the wave's pressure. Wind and tide create waves. So wind is moving air. A soft breeze is pleasant, but fierce winds like those of a hurricane can be destructive. Wind in this picture is pushing and pulling on the palm trees, extremely strong winds that can knock down telephone poles and even blow the roofs off of homes. Beneath its surface, the earth is extremely hot. The pressure from this heat builds and builds, and when it gets too high, the pressure releases by bursting through the hole in the earth's crust. This hole is a volcano. The pressure pushes the lava along with the ash and the steam from the earth in a fiery display. A thunderstorm can be a dramatic and beautiful. Lightning is created when a cloud discharges excess electrical energy. Rain falls from the cloud when the gravitational pull drops the water from the earth. A geyser is similar to a volcano, but instead of lava, water blasts forth. The water comes from hot springs that run below the earth's surface. 
People have found ways to control force and motion. No matter how complex, all machines are in some way composed of simple machines. Even seven simple machines, these seven simple machines help us to push and pull to move objects in various ways. So wind moves the windmill to turn and then the windmill can apply the force. Most vehicles include the wheel and the axle. Wheels help us overcome friction and move more smoothly and quickly. A pulley helps us lift things. It magnifies the force we exert. Gears are wheels with teeth. They are used to increase or decrease a force. An inclined plane lessens the effort needed to move objects up or down. A screw is also an inclined plane. It lessens the amount of work because it magnifies the force applied. A wedge is actually two inclined planes back to back. The downward movement creates a sideways force pushing the word apart. A lever is a rigid bar at the fixed certain point like these uh, oars. Rowers move the oars which are fixed on the boat and the oars push on the water. The water pushes back on the oars and then the boat moves things through the water. Today our world is full of soaring planes, speeding cars, rockets that push away from the earth, and only by understanding how and why these things move and the forces that set objects in motion can we create such wonders. By learning how a force affects movement, we are able to discover new things about our world and beyond. The space shuttle exerts an incredible amount of force to push itself away from Earth. Liquid oxygen mixing with liquid hydrogen provide the energy needed to accomplish this amazing feat.